because we've got a bit more time, then I will talk about the worksheet six a bit, which is all about the canonical ensemble. Okay? So all of these questions look at systems where the particles are non-interacting. And in the case of non-interacting particles, and in fact, they're all distinguishable non-interacting particles. Yes. Okay. And in this case, the formula for the partition function greatly simplifies. So let me explain this now. So we've got a system of non-interacting distinguishable particles. And we will actually use this result for the ideal gas as well, although we have to make some approximations in that case. So these two words are important, non-interacting and distinguishable. Non-interacting means the energy of one particle does not affect the energy of another. Okay? So I can treat each particle as having a well-defined single particle energy. Distinguishable means that I can tell two particles apart. So I can say particle one is here, particle two is there. I can tell which one is which. Okay. So in such a system, it's enough just to specify the energy levels of each particle. Okay. So it's enough to specify the single particle. energy levels. Okay. So these are the energies which a single particle can have. So the energy of the whole system is just a sum of the energies of each particle. Right? And this is possible only because they're non-interacting. If, non if they are interacting, then you can't say this particle has so much energy and this particle has so much energy because they share energy. Right, so I'm going to suppose that there are some energy levels. For this part, I will not make any assumption about their distributions, but the single particle energy levels are usually labeled by epsilon, and we'll call the ground state epsilon 0, epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3, and so on. So, epsilon n in general, epsilon i in general. So there are energy levels like this. So let's suppose that we have n particles. And we can say, what is the energy of each particle? So for example, I may have particle 1 here, particle 2 and 3 up here, particle 4 down here, particle 5 up there, something like that. Okay. So I can specify this microstate of the system by telling you where is each particle. What is the energy of each particle? So I, that's what I need to describe the microstate. So I say that the energy of the nth particle is epsilon i n. So, using that notation in this example, for example, I1, that's the energy of the first particle, that's in the zero level, right? So I1 is zero. I2 is the energy of the second particle, which is in the third energy level. So I2 is three. Similarly, I3 is three. The fourth particle is in the first energy level, so I4 is one. And the fifth particle is in the 
one, two, three, four, five, sixth energy level. So I5 is six, for example. So that's just to explain the notation to you. So the microstate is specifying the values of each of these things, right? If I specify I1, I2, I3, up into IN, then I tell you the state of every particle, and this is the microstate. So we specify the values of I1, I2, all the way up to In. So I tell you where all of the particles are. That defines the microstate. And what's the energy of the microstate? U. Well, it's just the sum of the individual particle energies. So I have a sum, n goes from 0 to big N, of the energy of each particle. And the energy of each particle is just epsilon i. OK. So that's all of the setup, right? So I've des described a system of non-interacting distinguishable particles. Non-interacting means I can label the energies individually. Distinguishable means I can say the first particle is here, second particle is there. Right? I can tell them apart. Therefore, the microstate is given by a vector like this, and the energy is given by this. So now we're in a position to calculate the canonical partition function. Z. This is so defined. Okay, let me write it down. So defined is the sum over microstates of e to the minus energy of the microstate over kBt. Right, that's the definition. So in this case, the microstate is specified by giving the values of i1, i2 up to in. This defines the microstate. So the sum over microstates here is a sum over I1, sum over I2, all the way up to sum over In. Goes from zero to whatever, okay? depending how many levels there are in your system. It may be one if there's just two levels. It may be infinity if there are infinite levels. Okay? So I just leave it as question mark because it depends upon the particular system, right? how many levels there are. So this is a sum over microstates. So they sum over all possible values of i. Then we have e to the minus energy. Well, this is e to the minus sum n goes from 0 to n of epsilon i n over kBt. This is just the total energy of all of the particles divided by kBt. So I'll do this next part slowly because this is the kind of critical step which seems to confuse students when I've taught it before. This sum, let me write it out explicitly, right? This is e to the minus epsilon i1 over kBt minus epsilon i2 over kBt minus dot 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 minus epsilon i n over kBt, right? If I just write out the sum explicitly, and I can also use this property that e to the sum of things is the same as the product of the exponentials. The exponential of a sum is a product of exponentials. So this is e to the minus epsilon i1 over kBt times e to the minus epsilon i2 over kBt times times e to the minus epsilon i n over kBt. Okay. 
simply using the fact that exponential of a sum is a sum of is a product of exponentials. And now you see that this first bit, this is only i1, right? This is only i1. So this part depends upon this sum here. Because it's i1 and the sum over i1. This next one is i2. So this one depends upon the sum here. Right? And so on up to i n. I n only depends upon the sum here. So this first term, the sum is only in the first sum. The second term only changes with the second sum. And the last term only changes with the last sum. Right? So therefore, I can factorize. I've got the first sum like this. So I pull that factor into the first sum, then I pull the second factor into the second sum, gives me this. I2. And I pull the last set factor into the last sum. Like this. So this is a great simplification in the case of non-interacting systems. The partition function of the whole system separates into an individual partition function for each particle separately. So this is a great simplification. And you see that they're all the same. They're all the same, right? The only thing which is different is the index but that's just a label. So the whole sum is always the same number. So finally, there are n sums and the sums are all the same. I can write down z is equal to the sum. Just call it i because it doesn't matter what particle it is. i goes from 0 to somewhere of e to the minus epsilon i over kbt. All of this to the power n, because there are n sums which are identical and they're all multiplied together. Right, so this is the final result.